Hello and welcome to another Sela Moment. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. This week we are going to be discussing um, the people who don't believe there is a God. Now there's different types of people. There's people that truly don't believe that there's a God. Um, maybe they've heard of him, but don't know too much about him. Weren't really told much about him. Um, and they genuinely just don't believe. Then there's some that do believe, but they claim that they don't because they know that believing in God would mean that they would have to face the evil that is inside of them. And they rather not do that. So they are filled with pride and they know that if they have to believe in this God, then they, they know that they're wrong. They know that they're evil and they don't want to face that. And the Bible says that they don't, they love darkness. And so when light is exposed on them, it becomes very, very uncomfortable and they don't like it. So instead of confronting that darkness and allowing the light to expose the darkness in them, they just rather not go there. Um, then there's some that have what we call a church hurt. Um, maybe they were hurt by people who claim to be Christians, um, people who have been hurt by the church. And so they believe that because that person or those people were supposed to represent Christ and they did them wrong or did them dirty that they believe that that's what Christianity is about. And so they rather not deal with that. They rather not have anything to do with it and they totally reject it. Um, then you have people who know that there's a God, but may they haven't had any church hurt or anything like that, but they just genuinely hate God. Um, some people, it may not have been a church hurt, but it may have been maybe a loss in the family and they, maybe they trusted God in a certain area of their life and, um, it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. And so they completely rejected God after that. And they, they felt like God was supposed to act or do something um, a certain way, the way they wanted it to, and it didn't. And so that caused them to completely lose faith in God and to just be very angry with him and just reject him altogether. Then you have people who are, um, genuinely demon possessed. And so they truly do hate God because they are possessed by a demon. Now, we also need to remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and we fight against the principalities, against the evil that is either oppressing these people or possessing these people. So we as Christians need to be able to see the difference in each and every one of these individuals and have discernment and know how to deal with each one of these people. However, when you reject God, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of why you reject God, um, there are consequences, whether it be in this life or in the next life, there are consequences. Now you don't have to believe that, but that is the truth. Nonetheless, um, either way you are going to be faced with judgment. Now today we're going to read Psalm 53, which goes into a little bit about what happens, um, or what the consequences are of not believing in God. Now let's go to our Bible. I'm reading out of the NLT translation. You are free to read whatever translation you are more comfortable with. It goes on to say, verse one, only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. Now, why, why let's stop there. Why would they even say that? Why would David even say only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. 
Well, to me, in my opinion, it's quite simple. There is more than enough evidence that there is a God. Now, so many people say, well, prove it, prove, prove that there's a God. They don't really want you to prove it. I have been through that argument over and over again with people who say they don't believe in God because they can't see him because there's no proof that God exists. Don't even bother going down that rabbit trail with them because they truly don't want to believe. That's just their excuse and there's no talking them out of it. But the proof that I have that there is a God, all you need to do is look in the mirror. You are proof that there is a God because no one can make you. No one can just put some stuff together and make you. Or how about the birds or a plant or a dog or a cat? You can't make one. So in order to have creation, you have to have a creator. That creator is almighty God. Some will say they believe in the Big Bang Theory. Well, newsflash, order does not come from chaos. Order comes from a creator who is order. You don't have all of these intricate beings, these, these um, very complicated human bodies. That doesn't come by accident. You cannot have something from nothing. That is scientifically impossible. So if the atheists want to um, believe in science, that is a scientific impossibility that you cannot have something from nothing. Something created everything. And that something needed to be intelligent because if you ever do, I, I encourage you, do a study on the human anatomy. Do the, the, a study of the human being, of the body, of the brain, of the eye, of the skin. There is no way you will ever convince me that that is an accident. I will tell you now there is no way that that is an accident. That is intelligent design. And what's interesting is I did a study one time on the human body. And let me tell you, the deeper you go, the more interesting it gets. Continue to dig deep into the human body, even the human blood, the human vessels, the heart. It is so interesting that the deeper you go into science, the more you prove that God exists. That is my take on it. And I encourage you to dig deep because it is very, very interesting. Now let's start again. Only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. That's why David said that there's more than enough proof that there is. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. God looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. But no, all have turned away. All have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. Now, how long ago was this written by David? Thousands of years ago, before Christ. Now, can you tell me that? sounds like today. It sounds like what we are living in today, our world today. So as you can see, the Bible is not only relevant, but it is clearly still happening even today. Verse four, will those who do evil never learn? I would say no. <laughs> if we are still dealing with this thousands of years later, they won't learn. They end up eating my people like bread and wouldn't think of praying to God. Terror will grip them. Here's the consequences. Here's what will happen. Terror like they have never known before. God will scatter the bones of your enemies. You will put them to shame for God has rejected them. 
Now, does he reject them um, because he's mean? Because he's just some nasty God? No, he rejects them because they first made the decision to reject him. So you see, the ball is in your court. You reject him, he will reject you. Who will come from Mount Zion to rescue Israel? When God restores his people, Jacob will shout with joy and Israel will rejoice. And it's interesting because even Jesus talks about this where he says, you know, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my father. So it's, it's just a reaction. It is an automatic reaction. The ball is in your court. Will you accept him or will you reject him? Again, you don't have to believe this. It is completely your free will to believe it or not, but it is the truth nonetheless. Just like I can say, you know, my cardigan here is black. Someone else can say, well, I believe it's green. Well, fine. You can say that it's green. You can believe that it's green, but it's black nonetheless. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It is what it is. When you look outside and you see blue skies, you can say, well, the sky looks orange to me. It doesn't look blue. Okay, fine. You can say that. You can say that till you're blue in the face, but it doesn't change the fact that it is not orange. Now it is the same way with the confusion that we see in our world today, where people believe that they are one thing and they believe it with all their heart to the point where they begin to do irreversible damage to themselves. And yet the fact and the truth remains the same. You are not who you pretend to be who you have convinced yourself to be. This is why knowing who God says you are is so important. And if you know the Bible, if you read the word, you know who you are. Now I will say I am guilty of sometimes forgetting who God says I am because we get so, um, we get so bombarded with daily work and, and, and attacks here and there. And we get so consumed by it that sometimes we do forget who we are. But this is why renewing your mind daily is so important. When you remember that God says that you are what, how many of you know who God says you are? He says you are redeemed. He says, you are restored. He says, you are more than a conqueror. He says that you are co-heirs with Christ, that you are a son or daughter of the most high God, that you are filled with the Holy Spirit, that the power that raised Christ from the dead lives within you. That is who you are. You are healed. That is who you are, not who someone else says you are or who you think you are. Once you realize that truth, everything will change for you because then it doesn't matter what vain imaginations come to your head. They'll be cast down immediately because you will be reminded of who God says you are. If someone comes against you and calls you something, you automatically know who you are in Christ and what they say will not matter. That is so important to know who you are in Christ. And the only way you're going to know who God says you are is if one, you have to believe in him first. Now, believing in him is just the beginning. That is not the one and all because Satan and his demons believe in God. Clearly they see him face to face. They know who he is. So believing in him is only the beginning, but you have to also know that Jesus is savior. He is Messiah. He was the one that came 
And he was the perfect lamb of God the perfect sacrifice where he can, he was the only one that can forgive your sins. It takes more faith to not believe in God than it does to believe in him. Think about that. In order for a person to not believe in God, you have to believe, you have to have faith that everything happened from nothing by accident that takes more faith than to have the very evidence right in front of you and the more you dig deep the more evidence you will find now i will tell you about a movie that's called the case for christ that movie is based on a true story by a atheist he's an eighth or was an atheist his wife ended up coming to the Lord. She became a believer. He did not. He was so frustrated with her new faith, which again, that's another thing I don't understand. Why is it so horrible to believe in God? Why is it such a, that's another thing that I want our atheist friends to think about. Why is it such a, a horrible, like unconceivable thing to believe that God exists. Why? Why is it? Why are you atheists so upset at the fact that there could be a God or that people believe in God? Why is it so bad? Why is it such a, an, a, an unbelievable thing for people to accept? You know, some people don't care. Some people say, well, whatever, if that's what you want to believe in, that's what you want to believe in. But then there are other people that are literally like very, very upset at the fact that you believe in a God. Why? Think about that. But anyway, in the movie, he is not only a, an atheist and then his wife comes to Christ. He can't stand it, but his profession is he is a reporter. So he is used to getting facts, organizing facts and, and, um, creating a story. So he's a news reporter. So he goes on this very elaborate mission to prove that God does not exist. I mean, this guy literally travels the world looking for evidence for contradictions. He does so much research in trying to disprove the existence of God that the more he dug, the more research he did, the more evidence he found that God was real. The more evidence he found that Jesus was a real person, that he was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He found more proof that everything in the Bible is true. There is no other historical book that has more evidence, more scientific evidence of being true than the Bible does. And the, the beautiful part is that the more, like I said, the more these, um, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, archeologists, the more they dig in these biblical locations in Jerusalem and Israel, the more they dig, the more evidence is found that backs up what the Bible says. It is truly unbelievable. It is, it is so mind blowing. I follow this, um, this YouTube channel and I, you know, they don't know me, obviously, um, but I watch them and it's, uh, what's the, the name, the name of the channel is called, I, I believe it's called Ex Exhibition Bible. I believe that's the name or Bible Expedition. I can't remember the name of the YouTube channel, but that channel literally does that. He is an archeologist and he goes 
around digging and finding evidence. And let me tell you, it is, I could sit there and I have, I will admit that I have sat there and watched that channel for hours because of the amount of evidence that he finds. And I love that not only does he find this physical evidence, but then he reflects it to what the Bible says. And he'll tell you, well, in this location, this is what the Bible says about that particular location, about that particular year. And then he'll go to that location and he'll show you all of this evidence. It is the most beautiful thing. So if you, maybe you just want to dig deeper, maybe you are um, a believer and you just want to know more. Maybe you want to see all of this evidence. I encourage you to go on that YouTube channel and watch it because it is truly mind blowing. And if you are a skeptic and you don't believe that the Bible is true and you, maybe you don't believe in God, I encourage you watch that channel, watch some of those videos and you will see the physical and the scientific evidence that is found pretty much every single day. It is amazing. I absolutely love that channel and I'm sure you will learn so much in watching it. Again, I don't know, they don't know me, they don't know that I'm doing this, but I know a good channel when I see one and that one is definitely um, one to watch and to subscribe. It is truly amazing what that man is doing on that channel. Um, but I encourage you read the Bible, dig deeper, look for, if you are an unbeliever, fine, look for the evidence. Believe me, you're going to find it. The more you dig, the more you will find. And it's like the Bible even says it. If you seek me, you will find me. If you knock, the door will be open to you. All you have to do is seek him. Believe me, he will reveal himself to you in one way or another. Now, there have been some of you that have asked um, how you can sow into this ministry. You can sow by going to joshuascry.com slash donate, or you can become a channel member. Um, I know some of you, I, I don't mention that at all on in any of my videos and I probably should because some of you more and more of you are starting to ask you're sending me emails so um, if you feel led if you are led to um, you can sow into this ministry now for those of you who don't know um, I sow into other ministries as well I sow into ministries such as um, one for Israel they are a ministry that are reaching the Jewish people with the gospel, with Messiah Jesus. They are reaching them and more and more Jewish people are starting to believe in the Messiah because of their videos, because of the work that they are doing. They also help support um, Holocaust survivors and their families. A lot of them don't have money. They don't have enough food. Um, so it is an honor and a privilege to sow into that ministry. I also sow into another ministry called Impact Global Fellowship. And that one is also for ministry leaders that are doing, um, they have the, some of the members are missionaries in Thailand, missionaries in the Philippines, which I personally know. And I also sow into a feeding program my family and I um, we have sponsored a little girl in the Philippines um, through a feeding program where we know the missionary we personally know him um, and this is our second year um, I believe it's our second year if not our third year maybe our third year in sponsoring that little girl um, and that ministry feeds over a hundred children every single day which is amazing to me. Um, and then ultimately, um, some of you know, most of you may not know, but some of you know that my ultimate goal, my ultimate ministry is to open up a, um, a maternity home or several maternity homes 
where um, women and girls can find a safe place to keep their child um, if they choose life for their baby and then they end up having nowhere to live because of that choice i would like to provide a safe place for them to not only um obviously have their baby but to also teach them and disciple them um, into becoming christian mothers and christian leaders within their towns within their states whatever it is um, that is the ultimate goal uh, I don't know when that's going to happen, but it is on the Lord's time. And I know that much needs to be done before that can happen. But ultimately, that is the goal of Joshua's cry. Um, I also have, if you can see, I don't think you can see my shirt. I have um, Sela. I have a Sela collection. I um, partnered with FaithfulStyles.com. And they have a Sela collection there where I have several shirts for women and men um, because obviously our title here is Sela Moments. And so it's just another way to help support the ministry. And I truly appreciate those of you who have partnered. I do have several partners, which is amazing. You can also partner. You can be a monthly partner on joshuascry.com slash donate. There is an option to become a monthly partner, or again, you can just become a channel member and that will also help me greatly. But all that to say, thank you again for joining me. I hope and pray that this encouraged you to not only dig deeper, but to also, um, maybe if you are not a believer, that it made you think a little bit, um, that it encouraged you to look for that evidence that you're looking for. Um, because believe me, you will find it. You will find it. And God is good all the time. He is always, always waiting for you to find him. And his arms are always open. All you have to do is reach out, find him, seek him, and he will be there. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless.